Welcome back to the James Rule Crypto Show. My name is James Rule XRP. Follow me on Twitter at Rule XRP. It's Saturday. It's Saturday afternoon. I got to cut the grass. Uh, I'm going to show you a picture of my new ZTR Moore that came in today. We're going to cover some news topics that are broken today, and we're going to have fun. We're going to look at a video from Crypto Law, John Deaton's Crypto Law. We're going to break down a few things. We're going to have fun, and uh, let's do it on this Saturday. All right, this episode today is sponsored by the TI Project. The TI Project offers these awesome art plates. If you have the Sum Wallet app on your phone and you need to back up your uh, seed phrases, your seed numbers, you can do it with this art plate. There's a link below. Check it out. Get yours today. The Sum Wallet app. Arc plate by the TI project. Let's take a look at the numbers. Not much to look at. Market cap's a little over a trillion. We have lost billions of dollars in the last couple days in the market. Bitcoin is at 25,655. Ethereum is down to 1740. XRP's recovered a little bit. We're at a little over 50 cents. Cardano has taken a dive since Gary Gensler and all the goons at the SEC are now calling ADA a security. And we're going to look at that here in a second. XLM is down to, sorry, my screen is jumping a little bit. Um, Stellar is down to eight cents. Hedera Hashgraph 4.4. Quant V Chain is a penny and a half. I don't know. I guess these ads keep popping up and keep bouncing my screen around. But I use Coin Paprika to check out the crypto prices every day. I have a favorite set with some of my favorite investments in here. So do your research. Now this is my new toy. It came in today. They delivered it to me. It's a Husk Borna. 48 inch cut it's a special edition it even has led headlights like night rider so i can mow at night and piss off my brother next door <laughs> um, i needed a new more the other one i had was falling apart and uh, one of the guys in the comments said where's your ledger wallet is it tucked in there because that could have been a ton of xrp man well you know what I have a ton of XRP. I'll, I'm never going to give anyone my crypto totals. I'm diversified into many digital assets. I've been accumulating over the past six years. And I'm good, bro. I'm good, bro. Believe me. I'm good, baby. Okay, here's some news that came out yesterday. And it's kind of disappointing at what Gary Gensler has assumed and, and what's going on this in this market. People are liquidating. People are pulling their crypto off these exchanges. Robinhood yesterday announced that they removed three crypto tokens off their exchange because of the freaking SEC. Customers will not be able to trade Solana, Cardano, ADA, or Polygon using Robinhood effective June the 27th, the brokers said. So, you know, just like XRP, after the SEC sued Ripple in 2020, Every damn exchange in the United States delisted XRP because they thought, oh, Gary Gensler and the, or, you know, the, the SEC is going to come after us because we still have XRP on our platform. But you know who had the balls to keep it on there? Uphold. There's a link in the description below. You can still get XRP at Uphold. And now Uphold has integrated with the SUM wallet, X-U-M-M, where you could buy XRP. I did this morning. Look at my previous video. Here we go. Hey, Gary Gensler. And I gave him the middle finger. F you, Gary. Check this out. Coin Telegraph News came out with this an hour ago. I'm going to read it real quick. Hong Kong legislator invites Coinbase to establish crypto operations. Hong Kong Legislative Council member Johnny Ng has officially extended an invitation to Coinbase, one of the world's largest and most popular cryptocurrency exchanges, to establish its cryptocurrency operations in Hong Kong, Gary. How you like that shit? Including possible stock listing plans. This move comes from after the SEC launched subsequent lawsuits against various crypto-based companies, including Coinbase and Binance. Hong Kong has always been known for its progressive approach towards the world of cryptocurrencies, actively regulating the industry and actively developing regulations and compliance measures that boost the crypto industry's growth within the region. In 2023, the city's financial secretary, Paul Chan, had publicly announced their willingness to commit to building a robust and progressive crypto and fintech ecosystem. This is confirmed by Samsung's announcement in January that it is launching a Binance Futures Active ETF in the region and Chinese officials 
We're providing strategic approval to Hong Kong's pro-crypto initiatives. It's happening around the world, people. The United States is stifling this technology because they're so damn money hungry with the banks that they cannot just let it happen. Let's keep going. Now, I did the little laughing guy here, and and there's a reason I did the guy laughing. (laughs) Check it out. Ellie Terrett, Fox Business. She's a member of the XRP community. Says, there are a couple of Ripple billboards up here in Union Station. I made a reference to them in my article in March. However, this one, which is right opposite of the entrance of the SEC. Hello, Gary. How you doing? How you doing today? Says... We're building a better future for finance. Are you? And she turns around and there is the main entrance to the SEC. Way to go, Ellie. Way to get it out there. All right, here we go. Now, I announced this today because I had no idea. I went into my link to account and I went in the purchase option for Ripple pre-IPO. Yes, you had to be an accredited investor. Well, when I looked at the new price of the Ripple pre-IPO, it is now over twice as much as I paid for it on the Link2 platform. The price of the Ripple pre-IPO has doubled. I mean, I'm like, holy shit, it's doubled and they haven't even gone public yet. Yes, you had to be accredited. Link to there's a link below. Uh, if you sign up, you'll you'll get some cash for signing up and uh, check out the link below. I have an affiliate link. I am an accredited investor because I went balls deep on crypto several years ago. I'm cash poor, and that's the reason I became an accredited investor because I took that path less traveled and I went all in on crypto, baby. Let's go. Crypto law, John Deaton's crypto law. What has the SEC been hiding in the Hinman documents? What is in those emails? We're about to find out in three days on Tuesday, June the 13th. Watch this incredible video that Crypto Law got out to the public. In 2018, William Hinman was Director of Corporation Finance at the SEC. He gave a speech explaining why the token Ether is not a security. Putting aside the fundraising that accompanied the creation of Ether, based on my understanding of the present state of Ether, the Ethereum network, its decentralized structure, we believe current offers and sales of Ether are not securities transactions. Hinman's speech moved the markets, seen widely as guidance from a high-ranking SEC official on what makes a token a security or not. Then, in December 2020, the SEC sued Ripple, claiming that XRP is a security, with arguments that contradicted Hinman's speech. Hundreds of thousands of XRP holders, who never heard of the company, lost $15 billion in value and had their holdings locked on exchanges. They demanded to know, why did an SEC official give that speech, only to then sue Ripple and harm the people they are supposed to protect? For two years, the SEC has been hiding dozens of internal emails on the drafting of the Hinman speech that could answer those questions. What is in those emails? We know that while he was at the SEC, Hinman collected $15 million from his old law firm, Simpson Thatcher. That firm was a member of the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, whose sole purpose was to promote Ether. We know that market participants repeatedly asked for guidance about whether XRP was a security and got no answer. What is in those emails? Why did Hinman give that speech? Was he warned about moving the markets? What is in those emails? Was the speech approved by the Ethics Office? What role did third-party promoters of Ether have in drafting it? Did SEC staff say what Gary Gensler refuses to admit, that the rules on crypto are not clear? What is in those emails? After two years of fighting, Judge Torres has forced the SEC to unseal the Hinman emails. What has the SEC been hiding? What is in those emails? We'll finally find out on June 13th. You bet your asses we'll find out on June 13th, Tuesday, three days from now. And I absolutely cannot wait. 
I cannot wait for the tweet from James Fallon, from John Deaton, from the community getting it out there, reading it, making a video about it. I cannot wait to see those documents and emails because they're going to be unredacted. They're not going to look like a kid took a Sharpie and wrote all over them so you cannot read them. We're going to find out, and we're going to find out very soon, baby. Now, HODL. HODL is an acronym for Hold On For Dear Life. And this roller coaster ride the XRP Army has been taking the last couple years is hypocritical. You know, stifling of technology, stifling of innovation, stifling of the true value, the true price of XRP. We've missed out on so much because of what the SEC did. But you know what? All you got to do is hold on a little bit longer. My name is James Rule XRP. This is the James Rule Crypto Show. I hope everyone is having a wonderful weekend. I tell you, the weather's nice here in Texas. It's supposed to get wet here tonight. Some pretty good weather. We need a little bit of rain. But anyway, enjoy your weekend. Get ready for Tuesday. It's going to be fireworks, and I'm going to be here with you, and I'm going to be covering it on my channel. My name is James Rule XRP. Have a good day. And guess what? I told you so.